Kazakhstan, sandwiched between Russia and China, is the largest inland country in the world and has a population of 19 million. It is one of the former Soviet republics that have maintained close ties to Russia. It is rich in oil and natural gas and has been a major energy supplier to China. After its pro-China former president was ousted in the recent unrest and Russian troops entered the country, how will this development affect China, its relations with Russia and the Belt and Road Project? And what about all this that makes Beijing most nervous? Hello, welcome to my show. I'm Lei. Although China claims that its relationship with Russia is better than an ally, using its burgeoning economic power, China has been quietly expanding its influence in Central Asia, Russia's backyard. Kazakhstan is the largest Central Asian country, and the Belt and Road Initiative was officially kicked off there in 2013 by Xi Jinping and then Kazakh President Nursultan Nazarbayev. They reached a 30 billion trade agreement that included the sale of an 8.33% stake in the Kashgan oil field to state-owned China National Petroleum Corporation for $5 billion. According to the Chinese embassy in Kazakhstan, Chinese investments in Kazakhstan between 2005 and 2020 amounted to 19 billion US dollars, and some 56 Chinese funded projects worth nearly 25 billion dollars are expected to complete by 2023. Infrastructure projects include solar panel plants, logistics parks, and wind power projects. The China Central Asia gas pipeline which began operation in 2009, runs from Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan through southern Kazakhstan and ends in Gorkas, a city in Xinjiang, China. In March 2021, protests broke out across Kazakhstan against China's growing influence and economic power in the Central Asian nation. Activists also denounced the mass incarceration of ethnic Kazakh and Uyghurs in Xinjiang. How the anti-China sentiment and the ouster of President Nazbayev will impact China's investments in the country is also closely tied to Kazakh-Russian relations. Kazakhstan is the largest and wealthiest former Soviet Republic. It also produces 40% of the world's uranium. Russia has leased the famous Baikonur Space Center in Kazakhstan and has other military facilities in Kazakhstan or near the border. Its importance to Russia cannot be overstated. Russia and Kazakhstan both rely heavily on resource exports, which essentially creates a potential rivalry. As China's influence in Kazakhstan keeps growing, and the current Kazakh president makes frequent trips to Beijing, speaking fluent Mandarin, this has long put Putin on guard, as Russia has always regarded Kazakhstan as its backyard. To counterbalance China's increasing economic activities in Central Asia, Putin launched the Eurasian Economic Union with Belarus and Kazakhstan in 2014 and has now expanded it to five countries. Similar to the EU, the union will establish a unified market of 200 million people with the free flow of goods, services, capital and labor. Russia now supplies 200,000 barrels of oil per day to China in a deal that will expire in 2024. China, however, wants to source its energy supplies from Kazakhstan instead of from Russia. Moscow has pushed Kazakhstan to agree on a Eurasian Economic Union standard tariff. This will give Moscow the price-setting control over the oil and gas trade between China and Central Asia. So far, Kazakhstan has not agreed. But now, with Russian troops quelling riots in Kazakhstan, it would be very unsettling for Beijing if Kazakhstan's energy control were ceded to Russia. In addition, Kazakhstan has a 1,700 kilometers long border with China. 300,000 ethnic Uyghurs are living in Kazakhstan. Beijing is worried that Kazakhstan's domestic instability will affect China's northwestern frontier in Xinjiang. Kazakhstan is also an important transit country for China-Europe freight trains, which have played an increasingly important role in the China-Europe trade. You can check out my last video on the China-Europe freight trains. 
As much as these geopolitical issues concern Beijing, they're not the biggest worry. What scared the CCP leaders the most was that a regional protest about high energy prices quickly evolved within days into a nationwide mass movement that demanded political reform and democratization. The situation in China is very similar to that in Kazakhstan. Kazakh are demanding political reforms, local government elections, and an end to the persecution of citizen activists. And the underlying causes of the sudden outbreak of mass protests in Kazakhstan are very similar to the long-standing grievances of the Chinese people. Rampant corruption, wealth disparity, depressed economy, inflation, lack of freedom, and a small privileged group within the government controlling national resources and becoming very powerful and wealthy. Worst of all, the protesters demanded that Nazbayev, the first president of Kazakhstan, step down. In December 1991, at the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union, Nazarbayev was the Kazakh Communist Party's secretary general. He was the only one who voted against the dissolution of the Soviet Union among all the republics. Nevertheless, he became president after the country declared independence and held that position for 31 years. After protests broke out across the country in March 2019, Nazarbayev selected an ally to succeed him and remained chairman of the National Security Council, still in control of the country. The powerful Nazarbayev family has controlled the country's economic lifeline, and some profitable energy enterprises are owned by several of his sons-in-law. This is almost identical to the situation in China, where the CCP's princelings control the major industries and state conglomerates. A couple of weeks ago, on December 26, 2021, the world celebrated the 30th anniversary of the collapse of the former Soviet Union, a nerve-wracking event for the Chinese Communist leaders. The collapse of the Soviet Union shocked the Chinese Communist leaders then and still does now. They have been studying how the Soviet Union fell and trying to prevent it from happening to them. Political and academic studies have attributed the Soviet Union's fall to 1. Economic failure, 2. Corruption, and 3. Ideological revolution within the ruling Communist Party. The fourth and most important reason was given by Fang Ning, who twice served as a lecturer at the CCP's Politburo group study sessions. In Fang's view, the core reason for the collapse of the Soviet Union was the problematic power succession, which is also the biggest problem the CCP is facing right now. The unrest in Kazakhstan reminded the Chinese communist leaders of the collapse of the Soviet Union, as they are facing exactly all four challenges, economic failure, corruption, internal ideological revolution, and power struggle. A Chinese netizen posted a joke which I thought was funny and thought-provoking. He said that China's foreign minister Wang Yi brings bad luck wherever he goes. After Wang visited Myanmar, the country soon had a coup d'etat. When he went to Afghanistan, the country changed regimes. When he went to Kazakhstan, mass protests broke out. The netizen went on to say, Wang is now in China and let's keep him there. Get it? The post is probably removed by now. Okay, let's learn some Chinese. Let's first review the words we learned. Remember these country names? China is Zhongguo, the Middle Kingdom. The United States is Meiguo, the beautiful country. France is Faguo, the country of law. Germany is Deguo, the country of virtue. The next batch of Country names are purely translated phonetically, without specific meanings. Russia is Erguo. Kazakhstan is Hasakhe. Australia is Aldaliya. Japan is Ruben. Let's review them again. Russia is Erguo. Kazakhstan is Hasakhe. Australia is Aldaliya. 
Japan is 日本 Great! Thank you very much for watching. Stay well. I'll see you soon.